Hello boys and girls, welcome to another week of Awana with TNT. Now you might be wondering, where's Mr. Sam? Well, I'll be filling in for him this week and our apologies for the delay in uploading the video. We've had some last minute changes and mostly some, um, some technical difficulties with uploading and the computer and everything. But thankfully we're here and thank you so much for your patience. Now boys and girls, this week we're gonna be uh, looking at unit 3.6. Jesus shows grace to all. Now, before we get started, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for uh, this wonderful day. Um, thank you for the beautiful snow, Lord. Thank you for the health that you provide us, that you give us, that we can take pleasure in your creation, in a beautiful weather and just beautiful day. We ask you, Lord, that you be with us today. Guide us uh, as we learn more about you and guide my words, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, above all, for your grace, for your precious son, Jesus, whom you sent to die on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us salvation through him and help us to grow in you and walk in the paths of right of righteousness all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. All right, boys and girls. So I have a question for you. Have you ever had this happen to you where somebody is maybe really mean to you or really rude or they're simply unkind and at that moment was it easy for you to be kind back was it easy for you to show love and forgiveness back no it's not it's not always easy it's easy to show love and joy to someone who gives you the same thing but if they're giving you um if they're not being nice to you, then it's hard, isn't it? Now, can you think of examples uh, in 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 a movie or in a book, the uh, story, or maybe in real life of someone who lived through that, who went through a difficult time because of what they were receiving, yet what they gave back was still love and, and peace and joy. Well, I'm going to give you an example. And this example is from a boy or a young man named Samuel Morse. Now, this is back in the 1800s. So he was alive around, I believe, the 1870s to the 1890s. Now, Samuel Morse was a young boy from Africa. And in his tribe, they were not believers. They did not believe in Christ. But um, it came to this one point where he was pretty much about to die. They were going to kill him. But miraculously, God rescued him and, and a miracle happened where he was able to escape and he, he did not return to his tribe. And in the process, he came to know Jesus. He came to know, uh, receive the Lord as his savior. And in his desire to learn more about God, to grow spiritually, he boarded a ship to go to the United States. Something very interesting is going to happen. Now, Samuel showed showed God's love to everyone around him. And he was a very uh, humble and simple um, young man. And his faith was, was just tremendous. But anyways, on this ship, the men, the captain and the men, they were not kind to him at all. They were very mean, very rude to him, especially when they were drunk. And they, they one of them even wanted to kill him. But... Um, Samuel Morris always showed kindness and love and he showed forgiveness and he did not act in the same way they did and he did not act with anger back or anything. This, this, this caught them off guard and it surprised them. And in the process, and by the time they crossed the ocean and got to the United States, those men, including the captain, including um, those men that were so mean to him, they became Christians. They believe. They accepted Jesus Christ, and they believed in Him. And what had been a ship that was full of um, men that would not use correct language, that would be very rude and mean, and just not have proper behavior, it became a ship of love in Christ. And they were singing hymns by the end. So, isn't this amazing, boys and girls? Boys and girls, I want to show you a picture of Samuel Morris. Uh, there you go. And that, that, that's him. 
So boys and girls, uh, Samuel showed grace towards these men who were not being kind to him at all. Now, what is grace? You know what? Grace is such a small word, but the significance behind the word is so great, is so wonderful that there are simply no words to fully describe what it um, what it signifies, what it re what everything that's behind it, especially on a spiritual level, all everything that God has done because of His love and sending his son Jesus. There are simply no words for this precious gift that God has given us. So let's take a look at the, the definition of grace. So we, we, here we have it. Grace means giving something good to someone who doesn't deserve it. God gave us grace through Jesus Christ. God gave us grace through Jesus Christ by making a way for sinners to be right with it. Okay, so grace is giving something something good to someone who doesn't deserve it. For example, let's say you had a homework assignment and the due date comes along and you don't have your assignment ready. And you ask your teacher if she could please give you more time and she decides to give you two extra days. Wow, that was being graceful. Your teacher showed you grace. She gave you extra time, which you didn't deserve. and um, she, she showed grace by more time. Or let's say, for example, you, um, you, you, you purchase something and you owe money, and the person you owe money to says, you know what, I'm gonna give you 30 days to pay, it, pay me back. And that's showing you grace because um, we really don't deserve a chance to, time to pay someone back if, if we were meant to pay them right away. Now, what about, what about you're in a competition um, and, or some kind of game or, or something and, and you get a prize, but you, you didn't win, but you still get a prize. Now, that's showing grace because you didn't deserve that prize, but you still got it. So there are many ways you can show grace. But now what about grace from God? Well, to understand that better, we need to go back to the beginning. So back to when God created Adam and Eve. Now remember, God gave Adam and Eve this precious and wonderful and beautiful place to live. And he gave them the first commandment. And he said, of every tree in the garden you can eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so Adam and Eve obeyed this. I don't, it doesn't say for how long, but there came a moment in time where Satan, where the snake tricked Eve and she took from the tree, she took from that fruit and ate it. And she gave to her husband and he ate it too. And so now sin has entered the world and the human race is in a terrible, terrible, terrible spot. And so, as the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all sinners, and sin separates us from God. Sin cannot enter heaven. And so, what is the human race supposed to do? The only destiny for mankind is to forever and ever and ever, for eternity, to be separated from God in a place of punishment. And of course, death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. So there was this tremendous problem for, for the human race. So boys and girls, all people are sinners. Everyone has sinned and deserves the punishment of death. Remember, God is the sovereign God. He has the right, the knowledge and power to do as he pleases. He has the right to punish sin. And the punishment of sin is death and separation from God forever. And we inherited sin from Adam, but we also choose sin. We all live our lives and we, we sin, we disobey God. So we have this tremendous problem. Now, here's where the wonderful part comes in and the whole part of grace. Boys and girls, we do not deserve anything, anything good from God. We deserve punishment for our sins. Yet God shows his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
There is nothing that you or I or anyone could possibly do to deserve this. N nothing at all. But by God's grace, by his love and mercy and justice and, and everything that God is, he, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God the Father sent God the Son to be the Savior of the world. And Jesus gave his life and was obedient until the end. He was obedient until death and death on the cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins. Through the precious blood of Jesus, who, who, um, who, whose blood was shed on the cross, we can be made clean. We can have our sins forgiven. And this is an incredible and wonderful thing. Boys and girls, as it says in the Bible, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. For by grace you have been saved. It is by the grace of God, not of works. There's nothing that anyone could do that is would be deserving of salvation it's simply by it's so simply by grace it's the free gift of god so that verse that says for uh, the wages of sin is death continues and finishes with but the free gift of god is eternal life um, through christ jesus our lord so boys and girls this is a free gift from god salvation is a gift that god gives and so it's up to every single person to decide whether they want to take it or not. Some people say, I don't want it. I don't want that free gift. But uh, many others, and I hope you too as well, say, I want that. I want that free gift that God has given us. I want it in my life. I want Jesus Christ in my life. I want, I, I, um, I believe that he is the son of God. I believe that he came to die on the cross and took the punishment for my sins, that he rose again on the third day, that he ascended up in heaven, that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he is um, our savior. And you must choose to follow him and believe and trust in him and love him. And to love means to obey, boys and girls. So that gift is there. God shows us his grace through Jesus Christ. So boys and girls, to receive this gift, well, not this gift, but the free gift that God gives you, you must come to him. And the Bible says, uh, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Go to the Lord Jesus. Go to him, and he will not cast you out. And believe in him. Believe and trust him. As the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Boys and girls, trust that it is through Jesus. It is his precious blood that cleanses us from all sins. And as the Bible says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So boys and girls, we are all sinners, but come to him, believe in him, trust in him, and repent. Confess your sins. Turn from uh, the paths of unrighteousness. Turn from the wicked ways. Turn from doing wrong and turn to him. And as the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Boys and girls, when you receive this precious gift, when you receive Christ in your life, and you believe, trust, confess, repent, and convert, um, the Bible says, it also says, um, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, he, um, to those who believe in his name. So boys and girls, if you believe in him, you have the right to become God's child and be his um, 
be be part of his his children and this is a beautiful and wonderful thing to 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 do and through jesus you will be made a new um a new person therefore if anyone's in if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new so boys and girls this precious gift god grace he has given us something so good and so precious that we do not deserve and that is through jesus christ who died on the cross for us and he came to rescue us so that instead of being forever and ever and ever and ever separated from God in a place of punishment, we can through Jesus and Jesus alone, he is the only way to God, we can forever and ever and ever and ever and ever be in a place of blessing in heaven with him. So boys and girls, um, thanks be to God for his indescribable, inexpressible gift of uh, Jesus Christ of salvation through him. So boys and girls, just like God has shown us grace, we should show grace to others as well. And remember, we can show grace in many different ways, um, through time, through our actions, um, through forgiveness, through love. Um, so, um, for example, let me, let me give you some examples. And think of, how would you show grace in these examples? Let's say there's a, a fellow student in your class that is really annoying and who you feel is always bothering you and, and bothering you. How can you show grace towards that co-student? Or what about, let's say you're on a team, on a sports team, and one of your teammates makes a mistake in the game and because of the game because of that mistake they score a goal on you and your team ends up losing how would you show grace in that circumstance in that situation or what about what about your siblings what about your brother and sister maybe you feel they're so annoying and they're always borrowing your things they always want to be around you and they always copy you how would you show grace in that situation Boys and girls, just as God has given us grace, let your light shine before others so that, so that others may see your love, your kindness, your good works, and may they glorify God because of it. Just like with Samuel Morris, he showed grace when others were being very unkind to him. And by God's mercy and grace, those men believed in the Lord Jesus. So boys and girls, let God's grace and love abound in you. His grace is sufficient for you and let you show grace towards others as well. Now let's take a look at your verse for this week. So your verse is in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 and it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. In him, we have redemption through his blood. Who is him? Who is it referring to? It's referring to Jesus. In Jesus, we have redemption. What does redemption mean? Redemption means like we have been rescued. We have been um, uh, brought back, bought back to uh, our relationship has been restored with God. Jesus brought us back, bought us back. How? With his blood, with his precious blood. He redeemed us. He saved us. He rescued us. We were lost and he came to rescue us and bring us back to God the Father through his blood because through his precious blood, through what he did, our sins can be forgiven. So in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Trespasses means sins as well. So sin is anything we think, say, or do that doesn't please God. Um, there is also sin in omission. So we can also sin by things that we don't do. And so, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. So according to, to this amazing love and amazing grace that he has shown us, he has given us this precious gift that we do not deserve. Now, boys and girls, just as the hymn says, uh, let's see. so just as the hymn says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will shield and he will he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we've been there ten thousand years, for it's shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Boys and girls, amazing grace. How how precious it is. And boys and girls, not only did Jesus show his grace through all of this, even when he was um, here on earth, he showed grace to many by healing the sick, healing the brokenhearted, giving comfort to those who were mourning, um, by setting the captives free, captive to sin, captive to disease, to illness, to disease, to, to so many things. Jesus showed kind um, grace. For example, the the woman who was caught in in adultery, he forgave her. He and the the blind man who he gave vision to with what about Zacchaeus, the tax collector? He showed grace to him. There are so many wonderful examples that you can talk about in your small group. So boys and girls, may God's grace abound in you and may you show grace to, towards others as well. That God may be glorified in all and that um, all may come to him and receive that precious gift that God has given us. God bless you. Bye-bye.